Live to talk about some of the action, folks, as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. And folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, Teddy writes an outstanding Forex report, the Tiger Forex report, out every Monday morning. He puts out updates throughout the week. You can subscribe right now. It's only $97 from the month. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get one of his archived webinars in there as well. You got nothing to risk and everything to gain, folks. And don't forget, he's got some outstanding webinars out there as well. Capitalizing on time with calendar stock options spreads and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies both under the services tab over there at TFNN Teddy Kegstad good morning good morning Tommy glad you guys are back in action this week Thank you. Yeah, very fortunate um, ourselves. Boy, this area, you know, we got hit back to back, as as everybody knows, because it was just um, so, you know, captivating in terms of these two storms. And um, we're bouncing back. We're fortunate to have power, and and I appreciate it, man. But uh, so, where do you want to kick it off, man? We got we got quite a market right now. Whether you're talking about yields, we got a little bit of a, a bounce in the dollar off the lows of about a hundred. We're sitting at one hundred and three. What are you looking at in this market most of all, Teddy? Where do you want to kick things off? Actually, I think yields is where we gotta take a real big focus right now. I mean, okay. the low that we set on Monday was uh, really nice. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are puzzled. I'm not surprised about the fact that yields have been creeping higher even in the midst of a half a point rate cut. Um, you gotta realize that the market has been trending lower, meaning higher yields since, what was it, uh, the end of September? You know, that's yeah. when we uh, capped out. So that was before the meeting, you know, so we've had a nice slow extension. I think what it shows is that the market actually requires higher rates, um, no matter what the Fed wants to do. You know, I've been saying for a long time they're on the reverse end of the cycle, you know, so, but it is what it is, so they're doing what they're doing, right? Um, the half a point, I think, was overly aggressive in September. Uh, are they going to do another half again? Well, they could, but I think that would be really shooting themselves in the foot. And I think the market's already showing that because we had a half a point factored in already. You know, so now the question is: most people would say they're probably going to raise a quarter, a cut a quarter point in the next meeting. Okay, so we would have to go and take out the highs, which we may very well do. We may have planted the low for the next month and a half or so. But I would be very cautious where I think you're going to see some vacuum moves to the upside, and then you're going to see some nice sell-offs again. So and even if they, whether they do a quarter point or a half a point, wherever we buffer into those new highs, which I, I mean, I can't see why we wouldn't, you know, over the next uh, few weeks. Um, once we do that, I think you're going to see some extreme sell-offs, meaning that the market, no matter what, even though they know that, and this is good for the banks because their, their cost of, for, uh, for lending is going down, and they're still keeping up the, the bid is still staying strong as far as how much yields are going to uh, stay firm. You know, So that means the spread for the banks as far as profitability is very, very good for them, at least in the short run. And I think that's what you're seeing in, in, right now, and it's reflective by the price market pricing, both in bank stocks and also how interest rates are moving You know, as far as the market rate is concerned. The Fed's going to do what the Fed's going to do. The Fed could cut a whole point. It doesn't mean that the yields are going to drop a whole point, and especially if they were to. I think you would see yields definitely start to correct back towards the median, but then they would already be factoring a half a point raise eventually. You know what I mean? Where you may, may not even rally up in the 10-year or the 30-year to even justify that fair value with where the Fed is at. So I would be very cautious with the rallies on that. And I think that that's something that's helping to keep the dollar index from um, faltering, if you will, because there's every reason in the world for the dollar to be weak right now and weakening over the next few months. You know, and I think you will see that reflective once yields start to retract again, which they're going to. You know, the closer we get to a Fed meeting, I would say we're going to get at least close to those highs set back at the end of September, beginning of October, which would have the bonds above 127. They're trading at 121.14 right now, which, by the way, that low we had was just shy of our tar downside target that I was looking for in the Tiger Forex report. So we didn't hit it. Can we still go back and try and make those lows? Maybe, but I doubt it. I think we're getting this each day as we get closer to the Fed meeting. That low is more solid, at least in the short run. You know, I mean, could we take it out? Anything could happen. Um, but I don't think that, that would happen unless they thought that the Fed wasn't going to make a move, you know, at the okay. next meeting. So, which if, nice. in case if they didn't do that, if the Fed didn't make a move at all at the next meeting, then I don't see interest rates actually pulling back too much at all compared to yeah. where they were a month and a half ago. 
It is pretty remarkable how it seems like every 30 days or 60 days, the whole world changes in terms of how the market is pricing the expectation of rate cuts. Um, you, you referenced the 50 basis point cut. and Yeah, things have changed dramatically already from where they were pricing, where the market was. That seems like maybe a little bit excessive. And uh, I think in hindsight, yeah, they probably go 25 if they know what they do now. But it is remarkable how quickly things keep changing. Um, what do you think? Can I, can I jump to gold? Because, you know, we sure. got a lot of gold bugs out there, of course. And I just want to get your take because it's remarkable how well gold has actually held up. And we'll, we can talk crude after this, too, because I know crude's really, you know, sure. 70 bucks. But it is remarkable how well gold has priced up, uh, held up, priced in dollars when you have that bounce from about 100 to 103 in the dollar. And you still got gold pushing all time highs. You got any takes on gold as we're pushing 2700 yet again this morning up by 19 bucks on the session? You know, a few weeks ago, we had that conversation where I started off about how I ran into a buddy of mine when we were watching a Bears game, and uh, that was the biggest thing. He's like, what is your long-term perspective? I'm like, well, I'm like, buy gold. I'm like, silver, not so much, but maybe a little bit. But I, and but as a whole, I'm like, buy bonds. You know, I'm like, right now, I'm like, I told him, my like, bonds are actually getting a little cheaper. I'm like, that's a natural reaction for what's going on because the market wants higher rates, not lower rates. But they're not going to get yeah. that. There's going to be that spread. So buying bonds and definitely gold for the long term, not long, long term. I'm saying over the next sure. three to four months, especially okay. we get to get we get through the election. No matter who gets elected, it doesn't matter. And then getting to inauguration day, because no matter who okay. gets elected, that's definitely going to be where you may see a, a, a peak in gold or you may see okay. a, a correction come off of that or you may even see a major acceleration. You can see you nice. can probably see gold literally um, come the sec end of the second quarter next year be probably every bit of 30% higher than where it is today. Oh, you, you, know? got, you got those ears perked so, up and listening on um, the airwaves, Teddy. But that it, did also it. Could be, it also could, it could have also, also fallen back from highs to where it is now come sure. February, you know, in which okay. case then I think you would see a, a peak in gold for a while. Okay. And it has been quite a run, man. I was talking about, you know, the last year where, I mean, you know, you pull it back one year, you're at 1900, but you don't have to go much further than that, man, to get the lowest 1600 two years ago, I guess. Yeah. 1600, the last two years, 1600 up to 2700 in almost a straight shot over those two years. Pretty remarkable. Uh, we got about crude. one minute left. How about crude, Teddy? What do we got going on with crude, man? $70 and 50 cents. We had a spike. We got some geopolitical risks. Of course, they're saying they're not going to bomb. They're not saying, but the news out right. there that maybe the Iranian oil facilities will not get taken out. What do you think of crude at $70.44 right now? You know, crude was trading at 76 on Friday, and now it fell down into our critical support band that we had in the Tiger Forex report. It actually spiked below it yesterday, and even uh, today it's trading just below it. Below $71, I think you're going to have a lot of um, support there. I don't think you're going to have heavy okay. selling. So I'm looking for a range trade up to 78 I like it, man. $70. Nice round number. Teddy, mm -hmm. I appreciate it so much. Folks, check out that Tiger Forex report. Check out some of his webinars right at TFNN. Teddy, have a great week, man. Thank you so much Take as care, always. Tommy. I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, brother. All right. Take care.